Photographing ancient coins can be a little trickier than modern coins. Modern coins can easily be placed against a white background by cropping the coin using the circular select tool. Since ancient coins are not perfectly round, they cannot easily be placed against a white background this way. Therefore, one has to be a little more meticulous when photographing ancient coins. The first step in photographing ancient coins is to set up the camera. You will need the camera mounted on a tripod. If you do not have a dedicated macro lens, then a macro extension tube is necessary. Inexpensive ones can be found online. A zoom lens helps to reduce the depth of field at full zoom. I use the Canon EFS 18 to 200 mm lens. Attach an LED ring light to the front of the lens for an even illumination. The next step is to set up the coin. I used a white sheet of paper as the backdrop. I used the tassel from an old pair of blinds as the pedestal. And then the coin can be placed on a flat platform as shown on the left. There are several things one must consider when aligning the camera with the coin. Before one attaches the lens to the macro extension tube, one must set it to the widest aperture setting to let the most amount of light into the lens. The lens tubes reduce the amount of light so this will ensure that enough light passes through for a good photo. At such a close range between the lens and the coin, the intensity of the ring light may not make much of a difference to the illumination. Depending on one's setup, however, it may make a slight difference so one can adjust it accordingly. One must also adjust the neck of the tripod to bring the camera and lens closer to the coin. One must be careful to make sure that the camera is directly above the coin. If the camera is slightly off alignment, it may create a shadow as shown by the red arrow. One must also adjust the distance of the camera to the coin. This is easily done by sliding the neck of the tripod down while keeping the coin in frame. As seen in this example, if the camera is too high, there will be a halo of a shadow around the coin. This will make it difficult when editing the photo. By sliding the neck of the tripod down, one can maximize the coin within the frame as well as help reduce any edge shadows. Clearly one can see how the edge shadows disappear by having the lens closer to the coin. The next part is getting the camera set up to properly take a photo. Once the coin is aligned properly in the frame, one can then focus on focusing the coin. Many ancient coins were struck with very high relief. With a very narrow depth of field, one must be careful at getting the focus just right. One can manually focus the coin to get the high spots or the surface of the coin, but if one manually focuses to somewhere between the high spots and the surface, then the entire coin can look a little sharper once the processed photo is scaled down. To help with taking a crisp photo as well as minimize camera shake, it is recommended to use the two second timer feature. With having the camera adjusted to the widest aperture and to the lowest ISO setting, one can then adjust the shutter speed to the proper exposure setting on the camera. One can now take the picture. Okay, so I imported the coins into Lightroom and these are the two images for the front and back which I chose. And I'm gonna highlight both, you know, you press the shift key on the keyboard and select both. And under the develop tools, I make sure I enable a profile correction for the lens, you know, based on the distortion of each individual type of lens. And as you can see, I have the Canon EFS 18 to 200 millimeter lens. Now, one thing you want to do is make sure that when you fix the distortion, you don't crop the coin. Remember, I mentioned getting the coin in as much of the frame as possible to minimize shadows along the edges. So anyway, with both selected, you can now edit both coin, both the front and back at the same time. And one thing I like to do is push the histogram in further so the areas that are too dark or too light can be brought in a little closer and that hinders anything from being unexposed and areas being overexposed and now the coin looks a little dark so I'm gonna adjust exposure but not too much you can see the back the white area is a little gray 
and I have trouble white balancing on here. I need to research more. I just haven't, so I'm going to actually export this in white balance in GIMP. But while we're in Lightroom, you can adjust a few other things. Like down here, you notice there is some purple fringing. Like right there. So you can actually go in Lightroom under the um, this feature, HSL, Color, and BW, and adjust the purple. If I take the purple all the way out, oops, I added too much purple. Let me undo that and hit the negative sign this time. And you look at it compared to with the purple. You can see it, um, it doesn't look that much different, but on the back side here is too much purple. So then if I do take out the purple, it looks a little less colorful. So instead of taking out all the purple, I'm going to take out part of the purple. And that looks a little better. Now another thing, and we're going to demonstrate with the front side of the coin, right here you have too much yellow. So I'm also going to minimize the yellow, but if I take all the yellow out, you see how the coin looks almost black and white versus if I have some color in there. So I actually want to just take out some of the yellow, and I'm going to do negative 75. That's eh, still too much. So then I'm going to do negative 50. Yeah, that's a little better. So this is the simple processing that I'm going to do on this coin. You know, even a little bit of yellow here is gone, so... Anyway, it still looks like it has colors without the purple fringing and the extreme yellows from interfering too much. Another thing is, if you look at it at full um, resolution, you can see there is a little grain, but not too much because we shot at the lowest ISO setting of the camera, which on my camera is 100 ISO. This coin, as you notice, I didn't have it perfectly in centered, but nevertheless I had it close enough there wasn't as much sh shadows. But this area looks a little dark, and they tend to be grainy in photos, so you can see a little grain even at high ISO. And with ancient coins, because of the high relief, this can be a little bit unavoidable. So next we're going to export. And let me go to the menu and hit export. And I'm going to put it in the subfolder on my desktop. And I'm actually going to change this to ancient coin. And I'm making sure I have it in a TIFF format and not resized. And this way I have it at the highest quality. And normally you would want 16 bits, but the version of GIMP I have supports 8 GIMP bits. And, you know, if you do more editing in other software, you know, sometimes this, especially if it's older software, will help minimize issues. So now I'm going to export it. And it's exporting, and then we'll open it in GIMP. So here I have the front and the back of the coin opened in GIMP. And what I'm going to do is go to the levels under the colors and use this feature here. And because we filmed this on a pedestal elevated and had the lens close to minimize shadows around the coin, this area here is fairly even. So I can click anywhere, and now it's nicely white balanced. If you were to have this white balanced in GIMP to where the coin is a little too light, here I think it looks just right, but if it is too light, simply adjust the exposure in Lightroom and then re-export it. So let's hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is using the crosshair selection, I'm going to copy this. And sometimes I like to cut it just to make sure it copied. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to do the same thing where I will first adjust the white balance. And then I'll save this. And then I'm going to go up to Image, adjust the canvas size. And here I detach these so they're not synchronized to keep their aspect ratio. And I'm going to make this, let's see, I'm going to make this 11,000 pixels. OK, and that is to the left. Good, I don't, don't need to adjust there. And we'll resize. And then I'm going to shrink this down so I can 
see more of this. Now what I'm going to do is take layer, set it to the image size. Ah, perfect. And then using the crosshairs cursor, a shortcut key on the keyboard is just to hit R versus going up to the toolbox and selecting it. And I'm going to highlight a small area here, select it, and then hit Control V to paste the coin in. So now the coin is pasted in. I can actually take this to here, make sure it looks about right, image and crop to selection. And now this is my final coin. I like to save it as a TIFF and I'm going to call it the final result. And you want to make sure it's not compressed in any format. I hate compressing it. You know, maybe JPEG if you're just showing it to someone online, but if you want a nice high quality, TIFF is the way to go, I guess, just as long as you don't compress it. And now this is the final result. I hope you found this video informative. Enjoy.